Hey y'all, it's Courtney and I am back with another video. This is just kind of like an update video. Um, <laughs> got a fun little story for y'all today. Um, so I'm hiding in the bathroom right now because I don't want the kids to hear stress in my voice. Um, I'm not like, you know, stressed to the point where I'm having panic attacks, but it's, you know, it's a little stressful. Um, all this craziness has finally personally affected us. Um, and I'll tell that story here in a minute. But as I said, I'm kind of hiding out in the bathroom with the door locked because Autumn has already asked me four or five times if the coronavirus is going to go away soon. Is the coronavirus going to go away soon, Mom? And I don't know what to tell her. And for a five-year-old to be even worrying about that is sad. So I've been trying to limit how much I talk about it in front of her and even her sister. Her sister's old enough to understand, but I don't want to stress them out if I don't have to. So anyways, um, something really stupid crazy happened. And let me just tell you the story. So... I think I might have mentioned this a few days back, but, um, on Wednesday, my husband had a fever because he has a wisdom tooth that all he, he said all the other ones removed, but it's the one, it's the one back here and he has no tooth up above it. So it just keeps growing. Like it's, it hasn't stopped growing, uh, for like years now. Um, and every now and then it'll get, get one of those little spurts where it decides it wants to start growing again or try, try to, you know, go out even further and his gum will swell up and he'll, you know, run a little bit of a fever and his gums will hurt for a few days and then it'll stop again. Um, I think we've all had that, like you'll have a tooth that bothers you for a few days, you might get a fever from it and then, you know, it just goes away as fast as it came. Um... So, he had mentioned on Wednesday to the guys at work that he wasn't feeling well and that he had had a fever. So, on Thursday, um, the owner of the company's son came up. I mean, because he's the boss on the job. He's the foreman. Um, but the boss's son, of course, he has a little extra pull. So, he, uh, he kind of gets bossy sometimes. Um, I hate... I hate this pink on me. I'm going to take it off. I got to wash this shirt anyways. Um, this is one of my cleaning shirts. But anyways, um, so he came up behind him and he was like, man, you're moving slow today, aren't you? He was like, dude, I told you I've not been feeling well and I have a fever. Well, just so happens that right at that same time, one of the other workers had been walking by and all he heard was, I've not been fe feeling well and I have a fever. So, he starts going and telling everybody else on the job that Mike's sick and he has a fever. So, everybody's freaking the fuck out. And the owner of the company was like, just go home, blah, blah, blah. Call me later and let me know how you're feeling. And just, you know, so everybody feels a little better. So, he's like, whatever. He kind of wanted to come home anyways. He wasn't feeling well. And he was like, um, you know, it's pretty bad that I am afraid to call off when I'm not feeling well. He goes, I'm afraid of getting laid off if, you know, because that happens a lot to people in the union. Um, they get laid off all the time. And even though he is the foreman, that doesn't mean that he can't get laid off if he misses too many days or he misses a day where they really needed him and it pisses off the owner or, you know, if you piss somebody off, he could get laid off the next day, you know, so he really, he tries to not miss any days unless he has to, um, he tries to be on his best behavior all the time and he very rarely misses days unless he's, it's for a doctor's appointment or something and he lets them know weeks in advance. So he was afraid to call off. Um, or he would have stayed home that day, but I guess they made enough of a ruckus and they called the owner of, or not the owner, but the, the people that run the entire painters union and, um, were saying that he's sick and he had a fever and this and that, and that they were scared and, 
Um, which I understand everybody's freaking out about it. But, uh, so, on Friday evening, late Friday evening, um, he got a call saying that, uh, he's not allowed to come back to work until he goes and gets a test proving that he doesn't have coronavirus. I'm trying not to say that word too much because I noticed that they shut off my comment section whenever I talk about it too much. But, yeah, they told him that he is not allowed to return until he has proof that he's not sick. And he's like, how am I supposed to do that? They're refusing just about everybody in West Virginia to even get tested because we don't, we have very limited amount of supplies because, as I've said in the video before, West Virginia always gets the shitty end of the stick supplies-wise when there's, you know, emergencies because people forget that we're even a state half the time. Um, so he's like, how do you expect me to get tested? Like, I don't know what you want me to do. Um, he's like, well, he's like, I need confirmation that you're not sick. He's like, so you need to go to the doctor, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I know they're not going to test me. He's like, uh, but I'm going to find the 1-800 number and I'm going to call them and see what they say. So today we called the 1-800 number and they basically told him, they're like, yeah, you're going to get denied. They are not going to give you a test because you don't have any symptoms. You don't have anything like you know, you're not sick, but the big bosses or the, the big bosses of the union want confirmation that he's not sick, but they will not give him a test. So he's not allowed to come back to work until he gets this test that they're not giving anybody except for elderly people or people that um, are already at high risk. Or if it's like pretty much evident that you have it, like if you're pretty much dying they'll give it to you and that's about it because I've heard plenty of cases of people who are at high risk and they still won't give them tests they just say we'll monitor you so I don't know what's gonna happen right now um I'm really scared <laughs> because we were told that they were not gonna be laid off or anything like that, that there was nothing to worry about about them not having work and whatever um, because there's only six guys working, so, and they say, you know, not to meet in groups bigger than ten. There's only six guys working, then, you know, they didn't see any harm in it. So we thought that he was going to have work, that work wasn't going to get shut down, um, which it hasn't got shut down, but they're not allowing him to return. So, on Friday morning, when he got paid... We, we fucking paid like 900 and it was close to $950 in bills. Our car payment and insurance alone is 700 Plus we paid our electric and cell phone bill. So I'm going to go ahead and get this out. Um, I am not going to be one of those e-bigger people. I'm not going to be one of those people that mentions money every five seconds. I hate hearing that. Like... It's so cringy when somebody talks about money every two seconds and, like, hints towards, oh, donate, donate. Um, so, literally, I'm just going to leave my PayPal in, I guess, the first comment or in my description box. Um, if you enjoy my content and you feel inclined, send me a dollar, you know, put a dollar in my PayPal. Uh, if not, that's fine. Uh, donate or don't. <laughs> I'm not going to say any more about it because I, it's just scary that we don't have a plan B because we thought that he was going to stay working. You know what I mean? We, we thought that we weren't at risk for him to get laid off for, and that's what we're afraid of. We're afraid that because he can't get a test proving that he isn't sick, that they're just going to lay him off because that'll be, make it easier. I mean, it'll make it easier on them, but what about us, you know? We haven't been saving, like, a ton of money because we didn't think we needed We didn't think there was any reason to. We thought that we would have a sustainable income. And, you know, I don't know. And, yeah, sure, he can get put on unemployment, but we have little kids. And not only that, but it's going to take a couple weeks, you know, for that to even get into effect. 
Um, and I don't even know that he's gonna be laid off. Um, something might come through and, and, you know, they'll be able to let him come back to work. Maybe he can talk them into seeing that he's not sick, but as of right now, everything is just so uncertain, and that is the scariest part of all this to me. It is not the sickness. It is not people being sick. I mean, that is scary, and it's really sad, too. Um, I hate seeing sick people. Uh, some Finally, somebody that I know um, is being affected by this. One of my good friends, uh, Jenna, um, her sister has it, and, you know, it's really scary. Uh, luckily, she's stable, but everybody out there, please say, you know, a little prayer for just for Jen's sister. Um, if you have a little few seconds, I don't know if you can hear my daughter out there singing. But this is why I don't want to stress them out. You know what I mean? I don't want to take that that from them. I don't want to put stress on them. So I'm going to keep this to myself. I'm not going to tell the kids or anything. Um, Patience kind of knows. I think she overheard a little bit, but I don't think about them. She listens to everything, though, so I'd be surprised if she didn't hear any of it. Um, but yeah, it's just really scary not to have a plan B because you didn't think you needed a plan B, you know? And I guess technically our plan B would be unemployment, but with so many people filing for unemployment right now, because you guys know the unemployment office is flooded right now. So it's going to take at least a few weeks to a month to even start getting unemployment checks. And that's not enough when you have two kids to live on. It's not going to be enough. Um, and I don't want to get back on food stamps because I'm... I always feel like I'm saying I'm too good. It's not that I'm too good. It's that I have this complex um, where I feel deep in my soul that if I take help for anything, that I'm taking from somebody that needs it more. And that I'm a horrible human being because there's somebody out there that's starving. And I'm taking out of another child's mouth. You know? Um, and I just don't feel right accepting help whenever I know that I could be so much worse. You know? Um, that's why I don't usually put my PayPal um, and stuff in my in my uh, links and such. Um, but you know what? I'm over that. I think I'm just going to start putting my link in my description and not saying anything about it, though. And if somebody likes my content and they are going through my description and they decide they want to give me a tip for because I obviously I don't make any money. I'm not at a thousand subscribers yet. Um, but if they want to give me a tip for, you know, the content that I put up, that's awesome. I don't really consider my stuff content. Uh, I mean, I'm not that. uh I'm not that talented at anything. I just run my mouth, so it doesn't really take much talent, but <laughs> I guess it it takes a, a sociable person to um, be able to get on here and talk for 20 minutes straight every day and never run out of things to talk about. So I literally make videos because I love talking to you guys, and I like getting the conversation going down in my comments section. So, I'm trying to be careful and not say too much um, about that thing going on because I don't want my comment section turned off because you guys are the reason that I'm here, you know? Um, all you guys that I've met and completely adore. Um, you know, whenever my dog died, you guys were the rope. I was hanging over an open manhole and you guys were the rope holding me from falling down into that endless pit. Of misery you guys kept you guys helped me keep it together um and I'm so appreciative that I have a whole group of people here on YouTube that support me like this and um, I hope that each and every one of you knows that I support you as well if you're one of the people that I see here all the time um, if you've commented once I you know I don't remember every person that only comments once and then I don't see them again. But you guys that I see in all my video comments, you guys mean something to me. You're not just some random person, you're my friend. So, I just appreciate you guys being here for me. And 
that's all I really want from you is just, you know, emotional support, and I'll give you the same. I mean, obviously not all of you are going to be here to emotionally support me. Um, that's not anybody's job, but those of you who are here for me, I appreciate very much. Um, you guys give me a shoulder to lean on, someone to cry to, someone to depend on. You know, you guys, you guys are just my friends. Someone to complain to whenever I'm going through something stressful just like this. So... Yeah, had we had we known that this was going to happen, we would have saved, uh, you know, I'm sure the cell phone bill could have been paid, you know, later, or, you know, the electric, or the car payment, probably not. They, that would, I don't want our car getting repossessed, but, um, you know, bills, I'm sure that, um, They'd have been okay waiting till next month or something. What? All right, guys. My kid is yelling for me. Um, post your updates down in the comments. Let me know how you guys are doing, how your family's doing. I hope everybody is safe and sound out there. I hope everybody's healthy. And I hope that your family and everybody that you know is healthy and loved and stable. Love y'all.